and Saudi Arabia has been on a huge diversification drive over the last few years. What's the opportunity for you here today and what deals are you working on? Well, we, we actually have a very large presence here now. We've got about 50 people in the region. Uh, we opened a physical office in Riyadh uh, to be closer and actually most of our expansion in the region from here on will be in Saudi, uh, staffed in Riyadh. Um, but the, the amount of activity here is amazing. I mean, it, if, if you haven't been here in a long time, the optimism, the energy, and I don't mean the stuff in the ground, I mean of the people and the desire to affect the world. And by the way, with, with energy in the ground, uh, providing the capital that it is, the region's just going to become a bigger and bigger player. Indeed, and there's deep pools of public and private capital here that sophisticated investors are looking to. But Ken, also quite a challenging time for the region as well. Globally, we've seen Russia's invasion of Ukraine really having a big impact on markets. Now Israel's war on Hamas in Gaza unfolding in the Middle East. What do you see as kind of the longer term geoeconomic implications and how should market investors be pricing this risk? Well, this risk is a very tough risk to price. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's not like trying to figure out where the Fed is going or where the economy is going. There are nonlinear outcomes by participants that make active decisions. I think that's a very difficult risk for business to make. Um, so right now is one of those times when you just want to be careful and um, good to be unlevered, liquid, and ready for anything. Um, but, but one of the things you were saying about the region, you know, I wanted to make sure we went back to because you were talking about the PIF. There's, there's an enormous amount of private uh, uh, companies and capital here. Um, and I do think some of what the world is missing is how much, how active the Tatawal is and the capital markets exchange and, and what's going on here really in private investment, not just with sovereign wealth funds and the, the IPO market and things going on in the capital markets that are driving the economy. So you think the Gulf and the broader MENA region can grow through this? Excuse me, I was too noisy. I could... Do you think the Gulf and the broader MENA region can grow through this instability? Yes, yes. The, again, it's, it's really the energy and the optimism of the people. You have a, a tremendous amount of uh, a tailwind, of course, because of global oil prices. But I think when you see the ambition, the optimism, and the energy, and there's a lot of pent-up wealth in family-owned businesses, and as one of the outgrowths of the Aramco IPO that I think was under-realized uh, at the time was by listing on the Tatawal, they created a very vibrant exchange and a very attractive place for the family companies, family-owned companies, long-term privately-owned companies in the region to go public. And where the rest of the world is having trouble with IPOs, this region is on fire. There's a lot of IPOs going on in this market. 